Welcome back, boxing fans, to another lunchtime walk, boxing walk with Sean on Boxing. So, it never amazes me more than to see how many casual fans have platforms to talk about the sport of boxing. And it's cool when people are new, getting into the sport. Obviously, that's what we want, more people getting into the sport. But a lot of these people are so opinionated and have such strong opinions on certain topics, yet blatantly show their ignorance and the fact that they just don't really understand shit about the sport of boxing. So the fact that they have these strong personalities and these strong opinions makes you scratch your head and think, what the fuck are these people talking about? Like, do they think everyone that listens to them doesn't know what goes on with boxing, hasn't been watching boxing, and they just want to continue to push out the same narratives. This one channel I'm listening to, it was totally anti-top rank, and, and you know, and, and they even expressed that they were very anti dazon a lot in their videos as well, which makes me feel that they're just a pro-PBC fanboy channel, which tells you that they're just American-centric. They're not about boxing. They're about American boxing and how everything has to align with American boxing fans' mentality. And it's a stupid way of looking at the sport because obviously that only applies to fucking Americans, not to the other 95% of the population around the world. <laughs> but this, this, this YouTube channel, The Puncher's Point, today they were talking about Anui's next opponent, TJ Dahoney, ex-world champion ex-world champion and sure most of us realize Dahoney is not the opponent we would prefer to see Anui in right now but this is an Anui who's probably going to fight three times this year three times not once three times this year right he just came off of a fight that was huge selling 55,000 uh, stadium in Japan 55,000 right you can't have just any opponent to make that kind of crowd, even if you are beloved and a fan favorite. You actually have to have the kind of opponent that interests people. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to pull in those kind of numbers. Because of Neri's history, obviously Japanese people wanted to see revenge for the Japanese people and him uh, be served that revenge. And that's exactly what happened. And, and hence why the fight was so big and obviously uh, so followed in Japan. But people like this, they think somehow, because he's fighting in front of Japanese crowds at 55,000, somehow his goal, his dream, his aspiration, the expectation is that somehow now he still needs to go fight in front of 5,000 people in the US. <laughs> As if that's what he should be going for. That's what he should be challenging himself with, right? And that's just one uh, sort of thing that highlighted their casual boxing fan mentality. The fact that because he is Japanese and a superstar in Japan, doing way bigger numbers in Japan than any American fighter today. There's no American fighters today who are putting up the kind of numbers in the US that Inui is putting in Japan. That's just a fact. But yet, somehow Anui has to come to the States, right? And we know American boxing fans and the casual mentality we see from a lot of these people who talk about these small weight fighters, don't care about them, don't watch them, don't give them respect. So even though they show themselves to be casual and uninterested in smaller weight class fighters, so now still Inui has to go over to the US to prove himself to this fan base, right? Because this fan base is so willing to support him, right? Because that's what we see all the time from these YouTube, uh, American YouTube channels, their willingness to support non-American fighters. <laughs> and if you don't understand my sarcasm, well, you probably should go to another channel because the truth is these guys look for every reason imaginable to downplay and dismiss non-American fighters, regardless of what weight class they are. Anui, obviously he gives them a few opportunities to dismiss him because he is a smaller weight fighter. 
and he is Japanese. He doesn't speak English and obviously they're casual so they don't really know who he's been fighting. Yet, what, seven, six, seven of his last fights have been against world champions. He moved up weight classes, became undisputed in two weight classes, fighting world champions to get those titles. But yet now that he's fighting TJ Dahoney, somehow that's a necessity to be criticized because Dahoney is not a superstar name that's going to make American boxing fans excited. <laughs> yeah, American boxing fans told you they're not excited about any of his fights unless he goes up to 135 and fights Tank Davis. That's the only fight they've shown any interest in actually having a new take part in. Showing you that they're disinterested in anything he does and won't give him credit regardless. They cry and moan because they have to wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning to watch his fights. But yet, if you're Japanese, you also have to wake up at ungodly hours to watch boxing in the US. So what the fuck is the difference? There is no difference. This is just a global sports fans issue. This is what happens when we watch sports from around the world. Time zones come into effect. Example. I'm going to be watching Spain versus England and then the Euros. And yeah, in fucking Taiwan, that's going to be at 3 o'clock in the morning. So if I'm a fan and I actually want to watch it, I'm going to get my fucking raggedy ass out of bed to watch it at 3 in the morning. Right? You don't hear me moaning and groaning about it and talking about how soccer is not global and, you know, the fact that they're playing this time, you know, Taiwanese audiences are fucking angry about it and, and obviously don't support worldwide football or soccer because, you know, these guys don't play at the times where they should. <laughs> Imagine if I did that. People would laugh at me and call me fucking ridiculous. That's the extent of these casual American YouTubers. Then they went on to talk about how, well, you know, expectations for him are huge and, and he's not living up to them by fighting guys like Dahoney. Yet, this is a guy who jumped up a weight class and fought the unified champion who was supposed to beat him. And I'm sure these guys probably were picking him to get beat by him in Stephen Fulton. And of course, when Inui goes out there and stomps all over that narrative, now, well, that's not enough. They ignore the Donaire fights, one fight which was fight of the year. <laughs> you know, they ignore the fact that he's a pound for pound fighter who obviously is being talked about all the time. And the fact that he's being talked about all the time shows you that he is a global star. And he doesn't need to go cow toe to American boxing fans. And he even made an effort recently going to the States to get an award from American journalists and going to a top ranked fight to more highlight himself for the American audience. You know, but let, let's get into this a little deeper and talk about some other misnomers that these guys just didn't really highlight or they did the opposite they ignored so as i said they're putting all this emphasis on top rank oh the reason he's fighting tj dahoney is because top rank doesn't like to make the best versus the best fights top rank only does you know showcase fights and fights of that nature which is uh, pure bullshit but what would you expect from casual fans that fucking are trying to dick ride one promotional company over another they're not going to be honest about it at all the reality is top rank has very little to nothing to do with who Anui is fighting Anui is promoted by Ohashi promotions a Japanese promoter and Ohashi promoters obviously has control of every single fight that happens in Japan top rank has control in fights that happen outside of Japan primarily I would think the US I don't know what would happen if he fights in England or potentially the Middle East on who would be involved in the promotion there but so trying to blame top rank because oh Inui is fighting a guy that you don't like or even though he's coming off of a fight with Luis Neri which was super successful it had very little to nothing to do with top rank boxing 
but casuals wouldn't know that because they're too busy trying to push a narrative literally bringing Shakur Stevenson into this conversation and talking about well you know this is all top ranks fault because look what's going on with Shakur Stevens what do you mean what's going on with Shakur Stevenson top rank made him a three-way world champion a pound-for-pound -pound fighter gave him highlight fights at 130 pounds and now he's just moved to 135 and he's kicking and screaming because he's not getting the biggest fights available yet he's only had three fucking fights in the weight class And unfortunately for him, two of the three were fucking snooze fests, which doesn't really grab a lot of attention. But even in saying that, his last fight with Artem, which happened last weekend, had the highest boxing ratings of 2024 on ESPN or uh, Celestial TV. Well, I'm not sure what the rankings are, but it just shows you that even in saying that, he still did great numbers in front of the American crowd. Sold out the 8,000 stadium or, or the venue that he had, which isn't that big, 8,000, but you know, big enough. But it's top rank's fault. It's top rank's fault that Shakur Stevenson isn't seen as an exciting fighter and hasn't gotten the biggest available opponents. Yet bigger opponents historically avoid fighters like him. We see it all the time. Ignore Laura, Duck Andrade, Duck Rigo, right? Teams move in different directions because they don't want to fight a guy stylistically like this. It's not the promoter's fault. A promoter can't fucking literally hold a gun to somebody's head and say, you're getting in the fucking ring with that guy or you're fucking dead. Historically, they could do that when it was controlled by the mob. But nowadays, the mob obviously doesn't have that much control anymore. So you can't do that. You make offers and then fighters take the offers that they are good with. And sometimes that means making great fights. Like example, the fight coming up uh, with Virgil Ortiz uh, next, which obviously is a, a great matchup or potentially what looks like is gonna be a great fight, Lomachenko versus Tank Davis. Like if Lomachenko Tank Davis is getting made, is it any surprise that Shakur Stevenson isn't getting a Lomachenko Tank Davis fight, <laughs> right? You know, they're not available. They're chasing each other in a fight that literally is bigger. A Lomachenko Tank Davis fight right now is bigger than a Loma Shakur fight is bigger than a fucking Tank Davis Shakur fight. Some people might not be happy with that, but that's true. That's why this fight's happening. Stylistically, it's also a better matchup, a more entertaining fight. And that's why the fight is getting made. Strictly because of those two reasons. They see it being a fight that generates more money and being more crowd friendly. And because of that, the fight is getting made. Even though we've had to wait seven years to finally get it done but better now than never, as the old adage goes. So of course Shakur is gonna be sitting there waiting. If he would have re-signed with top rank, he would have ended up getting a unification fight with Brancheck and become a two, uh, two belt unified 135 pound fighter and be unified now in his second weight division and be right in line for the winner of Tank Davis Lomachenko for undisputed. Yet because of his childish behavior childish antics unrealistic fucking expectations he's not going to resign with top rank which is fine he's a big man he's free to sign with whoever he wants and we'll see how that plays out if it will be a better decision or worse because we've seen fighters make decisions that worked out better we've seen fighters make decisions that worked out worse Andy Ruiz worked out better Ortiz Worked out worse. Broner, worked out worse. Wilder, worked out worse, right? Sometimes deals work out better for you. Sometimes they just don't work out that well at all. But let's get back to the topic at hand, Anui. So these guys are trying to allude to the fact that there is no big opponents at 122 pounds 
for a Nui. So if that's the case, does it fucking really matter who he's fighting next? Is Sam Goodman or MJ Akimendiov a better or more successful selling fight than TJ Dahoney? Is it? I mean, if you're fighting outside of Japan, maybe then MJ would be a more successful fight. Not in the States. You could have a new fight MJ in the United States and still nobody would give a fuck because Americans don't know who MJ Aklamendioff is and they never gave him credit. He'd be better off to fight an old washed up fucking black American fighter or Mexican fighter who people uh, remember because of the wars he is, was once in. That fight would probably sell better. I mean, that's what the PBC makes a career out of doing. Having fighters fight retread fucking old dudes with name recognition. If he was going to go to England or the Middle East to fight MJ, obviously then MJ would be a far better opponent than TJ Dahoney. But in Japan, Japanese boxing fans know who TJ Dahoney is. He's literally fought his last three fights in Japan. And because of that, he is a name. They're familiar with him. He's had three successful victories against Japanese-based opponents. So now if he fights Inui, there's gonna be a bit of that rivalry there. It's gonna sell. It's gonna make more sense in Japan than MJ Akimendiev does. A guy who's gonna ask for more money, but isn't necessarily a bigger name in Japan. But once again, it's like talking to children. People who just make stupid statements, but don't really understand what the fuck is going on. Right? I was a guy that was hoping I knew he would go to the Middle East or London and fight on the AJ undercard. Cause that's huge. And a great way to continue to build up his global fucking reach. I mean, we know AJ is a superstar. So you fight on his undercard and you're gonna get tons of, uh, you know, opportunity to showcase yourself. Then we get to point number three. These guys talk about how, well, because there's no opponents, he needs to move up to 126 pounds because that's the division that's going to showcase him for American boxing fans. Yet there's not one 126 pound world champion right now who's a huge name. Vargas? Ray Vargas? What the fuck has he done? Fundura? He got beat by fucking Stephen Fulton. They brought up Shushu, but Shushu is still a contender. He's never even won a world title. Why would he fight a guy that doesn't even have a championship? How does that make fucking any sense? Rob Z. Ramirez was the guy that Top Rank was trying to build up as a potential opponent for Inui. But we saw him got, he got beat by Espinosa, an unknown Mexican fighter, right? So what, Inui's gonna fight Espinosa? Somehow, is that gonna be a huge fight in the States? most Americans don't know who fucking Espinosa is. So you tell me, what great name is there currently at 126 pounds for Inui? He could go to England and fight Nick Ball, and that would be a huge fight. Fight Nick Ball on the undercard of AJ, and that fight would be a huge success. It would be a very big fight. It would by and far be the biggest fight available to Inui right now but that's him going up to 126. Maybe he doesn't want to go up to 126 right now. Maybe he feels after getting dropped by Luis Neri, he'd rather stay at 122 for a while and have a few fights here and gradually get acclimatized to the bigger weights and the bigger fighters. So we get to point four, that he needs to move out of the 122 pound division because there's no opponents for him. Yet, don't you watch boxing? Are you so casual that you don't really know the landscape of the sport around us? You don't understand that Junto Nakatani, a huge rivalry for Inui, a huge Japanese rival, currently is a three-weight world champion holding the WBC 118 pound title, who may sometime this year end up knocking out Inui's brother, which would make that fight fucking Sugar Ray Leonard versus Tommy Hearns for Japanese audiences. Sorry, it doesn't kowtow to the American narrative, but once again, at these weight classes, what fight fucking makes Americans pay attention anyway? Unless it's Anui going up to 135 and fighting Tank Davis. 
anyone that's a real boxing fan understands that a Junto Nakatani Inui fight is huge, gigantic. One of the biggest and best fights in Japanese history. And a great fight for Inui. If he could beat Junto Nakatani, what a fucking statement that would be. And then of course, you just have another pound for pound fighter who just laid claim to himself as one of the best fighters in boxing today in Bam Rodriguez. You stay at 122 pounds and then maybe by mid to late 2025, a Bam Rodriguez, a new Eve fight is a reality. Bam, a pound for pound top five fighter, a new Eve, a pound for pound top five fighter matching up for what is, you know, 2025's version of Bud Crawford versus Errol Spence. A huge fight. A fight that even American boxing fans would be excited about, especially another year from now where Bam Rodriguez gets that much opportunity to continue to build his name, build his brand in the US market. A fight that really seriously could get Anui to actually come over to the United States and put on what would be a big fight in America. A fight that could actually justify him coming to the States and taking on an opponent. But once again, this is what happens when you're making videos on YouTube, but you're too busy pushing narratives. You fucking just echo what you hear from other channels. You don't do the research. You haven't been watching the sport long enough. You don't really understand the whole grasp of boxing uh, from the biggest division to the smallest like many American YouTubers don't because they don't watch fighters in those divisions. They don't even know that Ioka just got beat by Puma in a unification fight at 115 pounds, now becoming potentially a huge opponent for Bam Rodriguez for three belt unification. And if you don't know that, then what the fuck do you know? Apparently not too much, but we're gonna go to you to find out about boxing and take your opinions as something that people should actually pay attention to. Two American-centric fucking 22-year-olds that don't really know anything about boxing globally. Don't follow it enough to have any fucking uh, opinion that's worth even listening to. But you can go check it out yourself. Find out if you agree with them or if what I'm saying is true. Remember to leave a like and a subscribe. Thanks very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Peace out.